Hello there, my name is Troy and if you're watching this video you have either purchased one of these flutes that I've made or you are looking to um, get the mouth armature right to be able to play this South American Kenna flute design. So the, let's just look at the flute we're learning here today. Uh, it's a South American mouthpiece design. As you can see, There's a you've got to play through this hole and it's hollow. You can see that. And <clears throat> you can't just blow in there because it won't, it's not one of those flutes. You have to. So, the step one, we're not going to worry about what these fingers are doing. This is just how do I make a sound on this flute? So, step one, and I'm going to use the zoom on this to help um, make it easier to. Um, see what I'm talking about. So, how do I do it? So, I'm just resting the top of the, the flute, this bit on my bottom lip, and then I'm just going to tilt it up and down like this. So you'll find the optimal angle that works. Um, so have a bit of a play with that. Now, if you made a sound, that's great. You've got that step. If you weren't making a sound, then you might have to make some adjustments to this. So we don't want to have a wide blow with the air coming out of all the mouth, we actually want it just coming out of a narrow stream in the middle here. And to do that, one way to do it is the wider you pull, you, the tighter this goes and you want that flat. So I'm sealing my lips up to, <laughs> finding it hard to get my angle on the camera. Um, you're sealing your lips up to about there and then there's You see that about a centimeter gap in the middle. So you got to pull it. You, it's like you're smiling. You're getting practice smiling every time you play the flute. So you're going to have these lines developing because you're going to spend a lot of time like this. And you can be happy while you're doing it too if you want. So tight lips, seal, and blow. And then when I add to that, So hopefully that's quite clear. Pull it tight, seal it, gap in the middle. And what you're going to, well, I'll tell you that bit in a minute. So you're adjusting your sound by pulling this out and in. Like this. That's how you're adjusting the size of this hole because this, playing this is all about airspeed and the angle that you're coming through that hole at. So how do I increase the airspeed? One, I can blow harder. I'm just going to dump all my, ox my air out and run out of breath and end up playing with stars. Um, so the other is to manage the size of this hole. If you make the hole smaller, you don't need as much breath coming through and the airspeed goes up. So bigger hole needs more breath to keep the same airspeed as a tiny hole with a minimal breath. I hope that makes sense. So a big hole with lots of breath pushing through gives you a certain airspeed. It might give you the airspeed you want, but you can only sustain that for a very short time and then you have to stand in the corner and get your breath back how to maintain a constant breath over a period of time is to manage the size of the hole by stretching your lips. 
So I'll normally play like this. And then when I play the top octave, I'll push that out and, and halve the size of the hole because I need more airspeed to hit the second octave, which I'll show you in a minute. But just getting a sound, see, first thing, boom, that goes out, that gets sealed, make the hole. Then you put this up to your mouth. Once you find it, find that perfect angle. You're blowing through, you see the angle of that flute. It's not straight up like this and it's not down like this. It's on that. This might be a good view to help you. See, it's not a, a constant. I'm constantly adjusting that angle because different angles will provide a different sound. Um, and if I'm searching for that big fat sound on the bottom note, I might need to adjust it. So there's several elements. There's the angle of this, there's this hole and the lips and what's required to make this hole the right shape and size. And then there's the oxygen coming through it and you're leaning into this. So you need that resistance. You don't want, oh, no resistance, all the air's gone. You're creating a back pressure, what's called a back pressure or resistance. That you can lean on that hole and not lose all your breath. And you can lean on there and you probably can't see now. So I will adjust it down. <clears throat> And it's coming from down here. So, so you can see when you're breathing in, it's coming out. And when you're push, you're pushing from your diaphragm to to sustain this breath and this air coming into the flute. In fact, that's a wonderful exercise to do is just to sit there over and over with your hand on your on your belly where the, the air's coming in and out. Find your note up here. You're not worrying about fingers. just do that over and over. Just find the note and sustain it until the air runs out and then fill up and that'll help get this this mechanism, this flute playing engine to become stronger and more used to this. Without, if you've never played flute before, if you're trying to like get the fingering right and this at the same time, your brain will most likely have problems because we can't learn multiple things in the exact in the same moment so it may pay to spend initially time getting this engine on and getting the sound on because without that you know th these fingers what's the point anyway they're not really going to be doing anything because you'll be struggling here but if you're focusing out here you might find until this is strong this is going to fall over so you'll go into your brain and you'll lose this so I, I strongly recommend just hands off for a while. And if you have to, you just use your top finger. If you, if you really want to. So steps. Step one. 
Obviously you want to sit upright with a good posture. Step two is to get the mouth right. Get the shape of the delivery of the air right. So we're pulling this tight. I'll just bring you right in. Oh, let's bring you in a bit further. So pulling this tight. Sealing it up to here and just having a one centimeter gap in the middle. Now it'll be very, very helpful for you to do this in front of a mirror because you, you can't see what you're doing or what you're not doing unless you're in front of the mirror. So I would be having either standing in the bathroom <laughs> or um, maybe lock the door um, or have a handheld mirror. Just Then once you've got that, we can introduce this. And practice activating the, the, the diaphragm breathing as well before you bring this into play. So do that exercise where you're breathing through the, through the gap and you're breathing in and out before you pick this up. Now we'll pick, bring this into play. Now I wouldn't use any fingers initially. Tilt the flute, but you're resting like that on the bottom lip. Again, a mirror will be very helpful for you to make sure you are resting in the but essentially the middles are very you know you don't want to be playing just some one of those flutes where you can play it off there you, you really do need to be right in the middle There you go. Just keep practicing getting a reliable, solid sound and a sustainable breath situation. And once you have that, you'll be ready to